for today's meeting. And so I'm going to talk about efficiency today. And after the class, I will give you 10 minutes to finish the quiz. Okay. Um, so before we talk about the efficiency, let's review uh, the thermal expansion. Uh, we we'll talk about this Tuesday. So the thermal expansion, uh, this Tuesday, we talk about three types of expansion. The first one is isothermal expansion, isothermal. And uh, this is an expansion when the temperature during the expansion is a constant. The temperature is constant. Okay. So uh, if we um, have a cylinder um, and there's a piston and we put the cylinder in a very huge heat reservoir, very heat reservoir. And then during this expansion, um, the, the chamber absorbs the heat from the heat reservoir. And after um, absorbs the heat as a piston moving during the expansion. But because the heat reservoir is very huge, uh, comparing with the uh, uh, volume of the cylinder, we can treat the temperature uh, for this system is a constant. So the temperature doesn't change. Delta T is zero. So we call this expansion as isothermal expansion. Second one is called uh, isobaric expansion. That means during the expansion, the pressure is a constant. So for example, if we have a cylinder and on the piston, we can load a weight. And this weight uh, guarantee a constant pressure during the expansion. Okay, so when uh, the cylinder uh, absorbs heat from the heat system, and there's a uh, heat absorbed by the chamber, then um, the volume expand. But during the expansion, the pressure and the weight are balanced. So in this case, um, we don't have uh, a change pressure. So we can use a constant pressure to calculate the work of the piston and calculate how much heat absorbed by the cylinder. Number three is also a very important, is called adiabatic expansion. Adiabatic means uh, the cylinder is isolated from the ambient environment. So if there is a cylinder, and we have piston, and then we use a very huge wall or very thick, very thick wall to isolate the cylinder uh, from the environment. So in this case, no energy exchange from the cylinder to the ambient environment. So if there's some heat and it cannot get out, okay, and the heat outside cannot enter in the, uh, the cylinder. So no energy exchange. If there's no energy exchange, then I have um, the net heat is equal to zero. So the cylinder doesn't absorb or release heat. Okay, this is very important. And when we have um, this condition, we will find during the expansion is nothing and is a constant. So the pressure inside the cylinder, volume and the temperature are variables and they will change over time. But we have a relation 
that is called as adiabatic relationship. The pressure times the volume, then we have power on the value. That's the ratio of capacity is a constant. Okay, here a gamma is the ratio of heat capacity at the constant volume uh, as at the constant pressure over heat capacity at the constant volume. Okay. So if we have this relation, we can use equation of state to figure out the relation between the volume and the temperature, and the pressure and the temperature. Okay, so this is a review. And today I'm going to talk about a full circle of the heat engine. Um, so here is an example. I uh, want to give you some practice to understand the three process. So there is a cylinder and we know the number of particles, we know the initial pressure and the initial volume. And we are going to find the initial temperature of the gas in Kelvin. Okay, so this is a question ask you to use um, equation of state to calculate the temperature. So the equation of state says for ideal gas, the pressure times the volume equal to number of particles and a constant times the temperature. So we know the pressure, we know the volume, and we know the molar numbers. Then we can solve the temperature. So the temperature is equal to 301 Kelvin. Okay, this is uh, first solution. Second one, and part B. If the gas expand to twice of the initial volume, so if volume is twice, so that's five, times 10 to the negative three meter cube. Um, Find the final temperature and the pressure if the expansion is isothermal, isobaric, and adiabatic. So for the isothermal, we have a constant temperature. So temperature is 301. Okay, so the pressure could be solved by using equation states nRT over V. In this case, you get the pressure just become half of the initial pressure. That's uh, five times 10 to the four Pascal. That's as a term. Uh, second process as a barrack. As a barrack process, um, we have a constant pressure, okay? So pressure is a constant, that's this guy. We have one times 10 to the five Pascal. That's pressure and the temperature will equal to the same equation. Okay. So volume is five and pressure is one. So the temperature here, We'll double. Okay, this is the uh, second process. The third one, adiabatic. The adiabatic, um, there's no constant variables. So pressure, volume, and temperature are all changing with time. So to figure out uh, the three parameters, we need to use the relation we call uh, adiabatic relationship. Pressure times volume gamma equal to pressure before the expansion. So I'm going to use uh, before the expansion, after the expansion because it's a constant. So before the expansion and after the expansion, this product are equivalent. C 
you want the one uh, before the expansion and p2 v2 are uh, the parameter after after the expansion okay the only number we know is the volume before the expansion is 2.5 10 to the negative 3 after the expansion and the volume is 5 10 to the negative 3 and then before the expansion we know the pressure is 10 to the 5 Pascal. So we only have one node, one unknown. That's the pressure after expansion. And how about the gamma? Gamma is the ratio of um, heat capacity at the constant wall at the constant pressure over heat capacity at constant volume. Okay, in this case, let's figure out uh, the number for a uh, Monatomic gas here, monatomic gas. Monatomic gas means the molecule only contains one items. So for the monatomic um, molecules, and uh, the CV is equal to three over two R. You can find this value on the equation sheet. And the CP is equal to CV plus R. So that's, five over two. So gamma equal to five over three. This is for monatomic, monatomic uh, molecules. Okay, so we only have P2 that's unknown. So by solving those equations, we have, um, how about that? Let me figure out. So eventually we will get three times 10 to the four Pascal. Okay, so I think the isothermal and isobaric process are uh, not difficult. Uh, you have very straightforward equation state equation to use. And um, I think the tricky problem is adiabatic. So you have to figure out the relation between pressure and the volume. And also you need to figure out the value of gamma. Okay, so let me take a pause here. Do you have any question? I have a question. Yes. What would gamma be if it was a diatomic molecule? Okay, for diatomic, CV will be five over two, and CP will be seven over two. So uh, I think the ratio will be seven over five. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me move on to the efficiency. Okay. So let's complete a circle uh, of a heat engine. We know um, there are two processes. If we have a cylinder and I have a heat source, or I use fire to uh, heat the cylinder and there's a piston. And when the cylinder absorbs heat, um, this piston is going to move rightward and the volume increase. So this process is called expansion. And during the expansion, um, the piston does a positive work. Work and the piston connect with uh, a wheel. and to drive the, the wheel uh, spin. And this is a very simple heat engine, okay? And if we draw a PV curve, 
to represent this process. We can start from some position with high pressure and low volume. Then during the expansion, the volume increase and the pressure could be any value. So I can just draw a curve like this. Okay. Then I got uh, a PV curve and the pressure decrease after the expansion and uh, um, the volume increase. Or you can draw a, a isobaric expansion, for example, mm -hmm. the pressure doesn't change, only the volume change. So depends on your preference, but eventually you need a curve. Okay, let me use the first curve. So you have a curve, for example, like this. Um, this is just an imaginary, imagined curve. Okay. In the real one, it could be any curve, but eventually you will have a, a positive increase in, in the volume. Okay. After the piston move to the right word, it, uh, the piston is going to move back. So this process is called compression. To get a compression, we need to remove the heating system so we remove the heat, heat reservoir, and to put some um, cold environment or just uh, remove the heat. Then the temperature will go down and the chamber is going to release heat. You get out and if it release heat, the piston is going to move back. Okay, so this process is called compression. And for the compression, um, for compression, we have another curve. Use something like this. So the volume decrease and the pressure increase, something like this. So eventually the piston is going back to the original position. Um, so after the going back to the initial position, uh, this heat engine completes a full circle. And let's see how much work does a piston do in this process. Um, the work for the expansion is equal to the pressure times the change of the volume. And the volume increase, so we have the positive work. And if uh, the piston move left word is a compression, then we have a negative, negative value. Okay, so under the PV curve, we know the work is area under the PV curve, pressure volume curve. So for the expansion, the, the area under the curve is this guy. This is a total work during the expansion. And for the compression, it's a negative work. So under the curve, the area is like this. So the network, network is equal to the work in the expansion plus the work in the compression. And the expansion is positive, compression is negative. So we will get a network. A network is area of the closed shape. I'm going to remove. Okay, so the area is the network. That's the network done by the piston. Okay, then let's see. And uh, we want to know the efficiency of the work. The chamber or the cylinder absorbs heat, but some of the heat uh, is released and only uh, partition of the heat convert into the work. So the definition of the efficiency 
is equal to the work done by the piston over the heat absorbed by the cylinder. Okay, so the um, the cylinder absorbed absorbed heat and and the value is QH. And some of the heat will release and only small piece of the heat convert into the work. And if we have a PV curve, we know uh, this is a circle. So this is a closed curve. So it starts from some position and expand, then compress, go back to original position. This is a full circle. Okay, after this heat engine complete one circle, it go back to original position. The original position will have the same pressure, same volume. And if there's no leaking, we have PV NRT. So same thing, same thing, same thing. So the pressure, the temperature go back to original position is the same thing. So if after one circle, the temperature doesn't change, then the internal energy doesn't change. Okay, so when the piston returns, the temperature change is zero. So the internal energy change is zero. Then we will have the net heat equal to the work because the internal energy is zero. Now let's see the net heat. The net heat equals um, the heat absorbed from the heat reservoir plus the heat released to the cold reservoir. Okay. And we know when the chamber absorbs heat, that's positive. When the release heat, that's negative value. But to avoid comp uh, the confusion, I'm going to use absolute value. So in this case, I use um, absolute heat absorption minus the release. Okay, then everything is a positive number. And this will be a subtraction. Okay. This will be easy to remember. And the efficiency we know equal to the work over the heat absorbed from the heat system or the heat reservoir. And the work we know equal to the net heat. The net heat is absorption minus the release. Okay, this is the efficiency. Okay. So that means if the heat engine release a lot of heat, if this is high, then the efficiency will be very low. Okay. So if we want to improve the efficiency of the heat engine, we need to avoid avoid uh, heat release. Okay. So our next job is to maximize the efficiency. To maximize the efficiency, uh, let's see, we need less heat uh, release. And also we have uh, heat, absorbed by the engine minus the work equal to the internal energy. Okay. And we have uh, the work okay. equal to this guy minus the, uh, the internal energy. Efficiency from the definition equal to the work over the heat. Okay. To maximize the efficiency, we have two uh, methods. First one, we are going to maximize the work. 
maximize the work or we can minimize the heat absorption. Minimize this. So let's do the first one. To minimize the work, we know the work equal to the heat, net heat minus uh, the internal energy. To maximize the work, we can minimize the internal energy, right? This go to zero. To minimize the internal energy go to zero, then we will get to maximize uh, the work. So if the work is a maximum, let's see what kind of process does this equation tell us. If internal energy change is zero, this is isothermal process. Because internal energy is zero. Okay, for isothermal process, uh, we got the max um, max work. And here I just draw many curve of isothermal curve PV because for isothermal curve P O hold on P V is N R T, right? This is a constant, so P times V is a constant. And for the high temperature and the chamber or the cylinder is going to absorb heat at a high temperature, the curve is high, is above the low temperature. So this is the temperature equal to uh, 800K. And for the blue curve here, and is when temperature equal to 100K. Okay, so um, if there is a heat engine, it will absorb at high temperature, it's high temperature absorb heat and release temp, release heat at a low temperature. Okay. But you can find that this two curve doesn't intersect. So if we want a circle, we need to con connect this two curve from some point like this from here to here. Okay, if we can connect these two process, we got a full circle. Okay, to connect these two curve, we need a process that can minimize the heat. To minimize the heat, we can get a zero heat. If the heat is zero, then we just minimize the heat. And what kind of process has zero heat? That's an adiabatic process. So in this case, I use two adiabatic process to connect the two isothermal process. Then I got a maximized efficiency. Okay, let me make it clear. So suppose the heat engine start from some position and the pressure is high and the volume is low. And I'm going to use a uh, heat reservoir um, to increase uh, the, the volume of the chamber. This process is a thermal process. So I'm going to use the heat system to let the chamber increase. So I have isothermal expansion. And this isothermal expansion um, will absorb heat. And the temperature is high. Temperature is high. I use T high to represent and this guy is positive. Okay. Then I'm going to use uh, adiabatic expansion to keep going. This is second process. The second process is called adiabatic expansion. Okay. So the first process is to maximize work. The second process is to minimize the heat. Then after the expansion, I need to compress the chamber. To compress, 
I need an isothermal compression for the third process. This is isothermal compression. So at the low temperature or cold reservoir and the chamber release heat. Then after the isothermal compression, I need another um, adiabatic compression to connect to the original position. So this is number four, is adiabatic mm -hmm. compression. In this case, um, there's no heat release to the environment and I use the full process to finish a circle. So in this circle, I maximize the work and minimize the heat. So in this case, this circle is the maximum efficiency for all of the heat engine. So if you have other heat engine um, to do the work, the efficiency should be smaller than the circle I, I make here. Okay, so let's calculate the efficiency for this circle. And this circle is um, uh, a very uh, ideal circle. So most of the circle should be have a smaller efficiency than this one. And uh, this circle was put forward by Connell. So we call the Connell circle. We have two isothermal process and one uh, and the two adiabatic process. And the efficiency, if we calculate, is equal to one minus the cold temperature over the high temperature. So at the expansion, the temperature is high. At the cold temperature, the temperature is low. It's a compression. So let's calculate the efficiency. The efficiency equal to the work over the heat absorbed. absorbed. And okay, let's see the work. The work is um, should be calculated by using how much let me see uh, for each process. Okay, so the first process, how about the work? The work in the first process, second one, third one, fourth one. Let's use this. Number one, work. This is as a thermal expansion. So we can use the definition of the work is NRT at a high temperature. And the volume is V, that's VA, VB, VC, VD. That's the volume, okay. VB over VA, that's a work. And in the, uh, as the thermal expansion, no energy going to be uh, internal energy. So the heat, net heat um, is equal to the work. That's also NRTH, VB over VA. Okay, second one, that's adiabatic. Adiabatic, we have the work. We develop just now, we have the work. Here, we have the P as a function of V. So you will find on the equation sheet that the work equal to a constant Hold up, let's see. Over uh, gamma minus one. And we have uh, VC gamma minus one minus AB gamma minus one. Okay, you can find this on the equation sheet. And this is adiabatic process. So Q, the heat is zero. Number three, we have work. 
and this is negative work, right? So that's N R temperature become low as a code over V B over V C. Okay, and the, the Q is equal to work and also equal to N R V C log V D over V C. Okay, then number four, it's uh, adiabatic compression, and we are going to use this relation, and the heat is zero. So eventually we have four works and four heat. In this case, we have, we just sum of them. So four process and two process of this guy, and you can find that the second process and the the fourth process has zero heat. So we only need to sum the first uh, process and the third process. Okay, in this case, you are doing the derivation and the simplification. Eventually, you get this efficiency. Okay, so what does this efficiency mean? So this is the maximize efficiency of a heat engine. If you have a real heat engine, it's ideal. Ideal maximum efficiency. If you have a real heat engine, the efficiency should smaller than the ideal efficiency. So what does this mean? This is smaller than one because the temperature are different. So if we want um, to increase the efficiency, we need to increase the difference of the temperature at hot reservoir and the cold reservoir. So if um, you get a very, uh, very big difference, you will increase efficiency, but it's always smaller than 100%. So this is a, uh, a result you need to remember that the efficiency of heat engine can never be 100%. Heat engine. Okay, so let's take some calculation of the efficiency of your car. The car, most of the car, the, the motor um, is going to use uh, the gas and heat the gas, ignite the gas, then drive the, uh, the wheel move, moving. And usually uh, at a high temperature, it could be, uh, let me see, 1,000 to 2,000 Kelvin. This is hot temperature in your engine. And for the low temperature, if we take the room temperature, 300 K to do the approximation, then the efficiency of your car should be equal to this one. And you can find that um, this is around 70%. So that means uh, the efficiency cannot larger than the 70%. The more than 30% of your energy um, becomes a waste. So your engine is going to release a heat to the environment and that heat is useless. Okay, so this is uh, efficiency I want to talk today. And so I think, uh, it's the end of the class. I'm going to give it a quiz. And next week, um, <clears throat> I will talk about one more um, parameters that's called entropy. And after the entropy, um, we're done for this class. And I will give you a review of the class. Okay, so do you have any other question? If you don't have question, I'm going to share my screen and
give you the quiz. And the quiz is very easy. And oh, not this one. Not this one. Okay, so can you see the screen? This is uh, six quiz, and I'm going to ask you to calculate the mole number, not the actual number. Okay, give me the mole number uh, of the gas in the room, and you are going to use equation state, and you know the pressure, the temperature, and the volume. So you only need one equation to get the number of mole. And I think the tricky point is you need to know the, the unit because I have different unit here. You need to convert all the units into the international standard unit. Then you will get the correct answer. Okay, so good luck. <laughs>